Okay, so today we're going to look at material selection, uh, which is how do designers make the decision to choose uh, the material for their job. So the first thing we're going to look at are the mechanical properties, which are here. And the first of those is strength. So if we have a look at this image here, we've got a picture of a crane. Obviously we want the crane not to fail under its normal working conditions. So we're looking at the strength of the material being able to resist any force that's applied to it. So strength is always a good answer to put in a question. Now the second one is toughness. And toughness basically means that you can beat it and it's not going to fail. I've got a picture here of a uh, armoured jacket. So it could be stabbed, it could be shot, and it's going to be able to resist any force that's applied to it uh, and uh, not fracture. Now the third one is hardness. Now it's a picture of a bolster chisel. Bolster chisels are used by stonemasons and bricklayers to break through hard materials. So the surface of the um, material has to be very hard. Unfortunately with hardness you also get brittleness. So this material has to be both hard but also uh, durable enough not to crack or fracture when it's hit very hard with a hammer. Uh, now the next one is stiffness and I've got a picture here of a crashed, cra crash test dummy going into the front of a car. Cars are made rigid enough uh, structurally but the actual surface of the material um, is now pliable enough to comfort any impact that you might have uh, when you hit a pedestrian or cyclist or a motorcyclist. So you want the material to be rigid and stiff but you also want it to absorb any energy. Okay. Uh, now the next one I've actually paired together that's ductility and malleability. I've got a picture of some lead here now lead is uh, a malleable material, you can beat it and change its shape very easily so it will retain any shape that you bang it into. Um, the difference between ductility and malleability is very simple. One you beat into shape and one you stretch into shape. Um, basically you're applying a force to a material to change its condition or its shape and it retains that shape. Sometimes you'll want to put lead work around a roof, around a pipe, uh, and you'll want it to change shape very easily. Now the next reason for choosing a material uh, are the other kind of properties. So yes you've got the physical properties, so yes we've got a physical need to have a uh, building block that doesn't uh, collapse, doesn't fracture, doesn't crack with massive loads, but there are other properties as well and a good one to consider for on an environmental issue is the thermal properties of the material whether or not you want the material to be an insulator for heat so loft insulation is a good example of uh, a material that's been chosen because of its thermal retention capabilities now the next one is chemical um, resistance and I've got a picture here of a cast iron uh, component down at the harbour it's gone very very rusty uh, over time it could have been made of a different material like brass uh, like stainless steel um, so you've got to consider whether or not the material is going to be exposed to harsh chemicals like salt, like chemicals in a dishwasher and whether or not you have to choose something that's going to resist any corrosion. Now the next one is the electrical properties of the material that's twofold, it could be like the casing on this drill it's got to be an insulator of electricity so that you prevent the user from getting electrocuted but it could also be the conducting material um, that you're choosing. So you want something like copper or aluminium that conducts electricity very well with very low resistance. Uh, the next one is optical. So you might be choosing a material that allows you to see through it, uh, to let light through. Uh, a window for example or a cabinet, a display cabinet. So choose a material that allows you to see through. A uh, window in a, in a, a hoover is apparently uh, needing to be seen through these days because you have to see the dirt, how much dirt's on the inside of your hoover. Talk to Mr. Dyson. And the final one here is the acoustical properties of the material. Um, very good when you're designing a hall for use with uh, large groups of people. You want the uh, hall to absorb the sound rather than reflecting the sound off the walls. So insulating against um, sound is something you need to consider when doing some interior design. And the last thing that we might want to consider is uh, 
aesthetics. You might choose a material purely on its aesthetic qualities, whether or not it's a particular colour, texture, shape, or the ability to reflect light on a surface, especially if you're an architect designing the outside of a building, the aesthetic material that you choose, be it um, zinc, aluminium, stainless steel, copper, or glass, very important how it reflects light, how it fits into its environment. So that's just an idea of some uh, suggestions of what you might want to put down in an exam when you're asked to select a suitable material from looking at its mechanical properties of the material to other properties right the way down to aesthetic qualities.